Today I want to take the new advanced tempo detection feature for a test drive in Studio One. Now I'm a guitar guy, I typically record to a click. I'm not thinking in terms of tempo detection like, say, someone doing remixes or other styles of music might. However, I was intrigued by this feature because it gives me something I didn't know perhaps that I needed. So while I do probably record 90% of the time to a set tempo, to a set metronome, I've occasionally had songs that I've recorded loose, no tempo, no click track, and sometimes speeding up and slowing down on purpose, because sometimes that just sounds musical. But what if I want to add MIDI information after the fact? Maybe I want to program a drum loop to go over the top of that part, but it sped up and slowed down. One option is to just play the whole thing manually, but is there a way to map the tempo of what I just played to the tempo track in Studio One, such that any other track in the session will follow that tempo as well. That's what we're going to find out today. So here is a guitar part that I recorded and I intentionally sped it up and slowed it down uh, just to give us an example of something with a varying tempo. So here's that guitar. Okay, so pretty obvious speeding up and then trying to easy turbo slow back down. Uh, so what do we do? Well, we right click on the audio. We come down here to audio and we'll see there's a detect tempo button. We click that, Studio One quickly does its magic and figures out what the tempo is. Next, we wanna show the tempo track. So if your tempo track isn't currently visible, which for me, nine times out of 10, I don't need the tempo track visible, but for this I do, let's turn it on. And what I can do is I can either, there's two ways to do this. I can right click on this, go to event or go to audio, and then choose extract to tempo track. Or once you've created the tempo, you can just drag the track onto the tempo track and it will auto, check that out. I, I almost just, I talked over it, but it already did it. It went through, analyzed the audio and saw that I started the song at 100 BPM, sped all the way up to 111 almost, and then back down to actually 96, back down to below where I was. That's kind of interesting. So the big difference here is it's detecting a change in tempo throughout the audio file. Detecting tempo of a static loop recorded at 140 BPM, that's easy enough to do. But something like this, where it's changing up and down, it can now do that, which is really interesting. So if we turn the click track on and we listen, we should hear the click track line up with what we played. <laughs> I mean, that is locked in. That made me sound in time, even though it's the click that's speeding up and slowing down now, too. So what are the what are the creative options for this? First of all, let me just say, sloppiness is not a virtue, right? If the song really needs to be at a set tempo, just record it at a set tempo. This isn't an excuse to not be good at your craft and be good at playing in time. However, there are times where speeding up and slowing down can be helpful. And if someone else is going to come along and play to you later and you sped up and slowed down, that's really hard to do. Imagine playing along to this without a click track versus playing along to this with a click track. It's night and day. And I would bet even in the moment, I wouldn't even notice as much that it's speeding up and slowing down as I'm just trying to stay locked in to the click. So now we can do that as a human playing along to this. It's now easier to play along to something that doesn't have a steady tempo, but I can also create something like a drum loop that follows this tempo as well. Let me show you real quickly. All right, I'm gonna bring in impact. That's great. I'm gonna click here and create a pattern. Okay, and now I've got a pattern. Make it really simple on the floor. Um, with some hi-hat eighth notes. Oh, I don't like that sound. Let's make it higher. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then, oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, new feature. When you click this button in the pattern mode, it brings the instrument, specifically impact, into the pattern window. So it's all one, look at it, it's all one window. Um, but I can make a bunch of changes without having to open impact. That's pretty awesome. Um, all right, I like that. So let's make that into like an eighth note thing. And let's add some snare. That snare's cool. Okay. 
let's just see. I'm going to turn the click off. Let's just see if this drum loop, I'm just going to stretch it out to the end of the loop. Will it stay in time? Because historically, if I played this guitar and then said, I want to play some cool drum loops over that, I'd have to painstakingly play it in or click it in and line it up. I mean, th this, what I just did, would take reasonably, and I'm very fast, reasonably at least 30 minutes, if not way longer, because the tempo's changing, so I'd have to just play it by ear. I don't have to anymore. I have a pattern that is typically supposed to be locked to a tempo, but because of this varying tempo, I can hit play and everything's going to be together. This is glorious and kind of gives me goosebumps. Let's listen and see if it worked. Musically, is that amazing to speed up and slow down like that? No, but technologically, that's pretty awesome. I still think the drummer should be the boss of the tempo, not the guitarist. As a guitar player, I shouldn't be in charge of keeping the tempo. I really rely on my drummer to maintain the tempo because I will speed up and slow down like that. I just said speed up. That's not even a word. Um, but that being said, imagine the possibilities. Maybe a nice piano ballad. And then you want some sort of rhythmic thing happening underneath, like a lo-fi beat that stays with you instead of having to manually play it in later. Suddenly you've got a whole song of rhythm in a few seconds without having to finagle anything. Or I think about the, the famous song, I always forget the name, the Nirvana song. Underneath the bridge. And the story goes that uh, Dave Grohl had to play his part Afterwards, So the guitar and vocal were recorded, I think he was on a couch at first, played his part. Then Dave had to come back and play along to that, and the tempo was all over the place. So they were, the story goes, like punching in just single bars at a time to tape to get it right. Obviously, if they had had this, they could have mapped a click track to Kurt's playing that would have stayed with his tempo changes that would have given Dave something to play along to that would probably have helped that process even more. I'm not saying never mind is bad, never mind's amazing, but that probably would have made that session a lot less frustrating. Anyway, this is just I I when I read this I thought, okay, that's neat. I didn't realize the implication. Maybe you're the same way. You thought, advanced tempo detection, who cares? Oh, now I care. Now I would bet. At least someone watching this just had an idea in their brain for something cool and creative they're going to do with this. If you do something cool and creative, let us know. Leave a comment. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.